commercial capital. This is the News at 10. Live from Channels Television. Reporting tonight, Kayode Okikiolu. Hello and welcome. Tonight, the people of Edo State vote to elect a new governor to succeed the incumbent, Gaduna Basaki, whose constitutional eight-year double term ends on November the 12th. INEC uploads over 90% of polling unit result sheets of today's Edo State governorship election on the Commission's result viewing portal, that's IREF, as we await the opening of a state coalition center. And the Nigeria Civil Society Situation Room says the Edo governorship election accreditation process was conducted using the bimodal voter accreditation system BIVAS with a device functioning well in 98% of polling units visited. In our business news tonight, Nigeria and Libya hold talks for the construction of the regional gas pipeline between both countries. And on sports news tonight, the eyes of the boxing world is on heavyweight division as British superstar Anthony Joshua challenges IBF title holder Daniel Dubois at the Wembley Stadium in London. Wait for result collision and eventual announcement of a winner is now on in Edo State, South South Nigeria, where voters today trooped out to vote for the next governor of their choice amongst 17 candidates vying for the position. Over 94% of results have now been uploaded on INEX result viewing portal IREV. However, the state collision center is yet to open. Earlier in the day, voting did not commence at the scheduled time of 8.30 a.m. in all the polling units visited by our correspondent due to late arrival of INAC officials in some. But as early as 8 a.m., some voters uh, were seen milling around polling units trying to identify their names on the voters' list pasted on walls. 2.2 million voters registered for today's exercise across 4,978 polling units spread across 197 wards expected to make the decision for the state. Sorting and counting of votes commences in the Edo governorship election with party agents monitoring the exercise. Here at Unit 024, Agbado School, or Edo local government area, the exercise witnesses some heated moments. Early on today, voting commenced in polling units across the state and candidates of the front-running parties were on ground to exercise their franchise. The candidate of the People's Democratic Party, Aswe Godalo, expresses concern of the reported arrest of a PDP supporter in the Romi local government area. Mr. Rodalo also says he will disregard rumors of the Independent National Electoral Commission allegedly being compromised. In Uromi, Ward 8, Unit 3, uh, about an hour ago, uh, one of our supporters was arrested by men in Mufti carrying guns. Number one, nobody should carry a gun into a polling unit. That's against the law, it's against the regulation. But you know, you just see people behaving indiscriminately. Um, and behaving in the way they are behaving, oppressing and trying to intimidate our folks. I want to keep an open mind because I've heard before rumors that INEC will go through a process or INEC has been compromised. I heard them as rumors and I don't want to believe them. I want to give the benefit of the doubt to the fact that INEC will work and create a free and fair level playing field. Meanwhile, shortly after casting his vote, the candidate of the All Progressives Congress, Mr. Monday Okpebolo, commends the electoral umpire for what he describes as a well-coordinated exercise. I'm rating INEC very high. Reasons because everything is moving smoothly and the beavers is working perfectly. It's 
you see it very as if it, you have not done it, you have done nothing. So it's like okay. Okay. just go there and vote. That is how it is right now. I believe the way it is, it should be like that everywhere. What I'm seeing here is like a testimony that Anek is getting it right. On his part, the candidate of the Labour Party, Mr. Olumide Akpata, adjourned the process to be peaceful so far. For my own process, it was seamless. Uh, the machine worked. I was captured. I picked up my ballot paper. I went into the booth. I, 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 I some printed where you will imagine I will some print, and uh, I, I stuck it into the ballot paper. So that went well. I'm hopeful that that is the experience of every Edo voter. Uh, we're getting some concerning feedback from around the state, but I'm not the kind of person who's going to uh, make any statements until I verify. Meanwhile, operatives of the Economic and Financial Crimes Commission apprehended three suspects allegedly involved in vote buying, including two men and one woman. INEC had also extended voting time in areas where the voting process commenced late. As sorting and counting continues, and with collation yet to come, indigents of Edo State eagerly await results to find out who their new leader will be. And with voting already concluded in most parts of the state, the Nigeria Civil Society Situation Room, NCSSR, a coalition of over 70 organizations, has been speaking on the process, highlighting the role of fake news and vote trading in the election so far. Well, aside the role of fake news, which it says contributed to heightened anxiety, the NCSSR in its interim report said... Its observers on the ground reported that the accreditation process was conducted using the bimodal voter accreditation system, BVAS, with the device functioning well in 98% of polling units visited. However, some isolated cases of BVAS failure were reported. On the punctuality of officials, it says reports from observers indicate that they arrived on time in 50% of the polling units observed and polls opened at the regular hour of 8.30 a.m. in only 48.4% of those visited. Observers also reported that security personnel were present and on time in 92% of the polling units visited, describing their conduct as being largely professional and without any reported incidents of intimidation. However, despite their presence, observers noted widespread instances of vote buying. The report also acknowledges the arrest of alleged vote traders in Orido local government area, and the price of votes ranged from 5,000 naira to 10,000 naira per voter in several locations, while voters were also induced with food items. On the presence of party agents at the polling units, the group records APC had the most with 41%, Labour Party with 13%, PDP 25%, PRP 5%, and others less than 2%. The Situation Room commends the peaceful conduct of voters and asks stakeholders to refrain from acts that could undermine the integrity of the process. And staying with the election in Edo State, the Center for Democracy and Development, CDD, is calling for the strengthening of fact-checking to mitigate the effect of disinformation and information manipulation. The chairman of the CDD Election Analysis Center, Professor Adile Ginodu, said this at a press briefing on the Edo of Cycle election. Professor Ginodu stated CDD that the Election election Analysis Center had monitored a total of 35 claims in pre-election period and on the election day, which had all three major candidates as targets of false claims. She therefore called for robust voter education and media literacy campaigns to equip voters with the skills to identify and debunk false information. Thank you for your questions. Our fact checkers monitored a total of 35 claims in the pre-election period and on election day. All three major candidates were targets of false claim, which bordered on alleged withdrawal or disqualification from the governorship race. Only 14% 
of the false claims peddled in the pre-election and on election day focused on key governance issues. On the morning of the election, several fake images and videos circulated across social media platforms, particularly WhatsApp. CDD Countering Disinformation War Room has also observed cases of old images being repurposed to spread false narratives about aspects of the electoral process. To mitigate the effect of disinformation and, info and information manipulation, CDD calls for strengthening of fact-checking initiatives, which will enable fact-checking organizations to work in synergy to counter false narratives during and after the election. As the people of Edo State await for or await the opening of the coalition center in the state, Channels Television has been speaking with the resident electoral commissioner of Independent National Electoral Commission, INEC, in the state, Mr. Anubum Onoa. And in that conversation with our political editor, Shion Kimbaloi, he spoke about the conduct so far and the expectations in the coming hours. I want to correct one thing. Those who are publishing results it is not their duty to publish result. INEC has not announced a result. We have, I'm not even the returning officer. The returning officer for the state will announce the result. The, the, the returning officer for the world, what we announce, the returning officer for the, uh, for the local government will announce, and then they will, will come to the state to announce. But I'm surprised that what I'm seeing in social media, that is not the correct position of the commission. Nobody has the capacity to do that. The law is clear on who should announce the result. So they should desist, Chair, we should help me and tell, to, tell, them, tell them that they should not announce any result. It is the duty of the INEC to do that, please. We'll bring you more on the Edo state elections. But Edo is not the only place election is holding in the nation today. Well, voters in Kwara State also went out to vote, but this time in local government elections. And that particular conduct has been generating mixed reactions, especially in of our local government area. While the election could be described as peaceful and orderly in Ilori, the state capital, residents of, of our local government area complained of insufficient supply of election materials which led to the suspension of exercise in the local government. Voting in Ilari Metropolis commences at about 10 a.m., two hours behind schedule. Notwithstanding, voters exercise their franchise peacefully. The polling booth of the state governor in Ilari West was orderly as Governor Abdul Razak performs his civic duty without any hitch. From what you can see here, uh, we voted for the turnout to see. However, the situation in our local government is different as the election which started around noon. As the election which started around noon was suspended due to lack of voting materials. This development is met with different reactions from the voters. We have about 173 polling units. No single polling unit have seen a material. Where they brought some material, there is no resource sheet. The voters registered that is about 800. They are bringing 220 voters uh, ballot paper. This is unexpected. Up to this moment, the election has not commenced. It therefore means there is no going to be election today because under normal circumstances, the election is supposed to start by 8 o'clock and end by 2 o'clock. Look at time. This is past 12. It's very unfortunate that uh, we are supposed to start the local government election by 8 o'clock. And up to now, this is around 10.30. 
there is no any electoral material. We have not seen any presiding officer. Nobody has come to any of the polling units. The last time Kwara State had local government elections was in 2018. This election seeks to fill the vacancies existing in the 16 local government councils of the states. And in part two, after the break, more local government elections, but this time in Imo State, Southeast Nigeria. Now, while the process was peaceful, well, it was marked by the turnout, late arrival of materials. And that's in a moment. Just stay with us. Welcome back. If you've just joined us, you're watching the news at 10 on channels television broadcasting live from Lagos as a reminder of our top stories. The people of Edo State voted to elect a new governor to succeed the incumbent Godwin Obasaki, whose constitutional eight-year double term ends on November the 12th, 2024. INEC uploads over 90% of polling unit result sheets of today's Edo State governorship election on the Commission's result viewing portal IREV as the people await the opening of a state collision center. And the Nigeria Civil Society Situation Room says the Edo governorship election accreditation process was conducted using the bimodal voter accreditation system BIVAS with a device functioning well in 98% of polling units visited. Well, it's clearly a big election day here in Nigeria as voters in Imo State, Southeast Nigeria also voted, albeit in the local government level. The Imo State Independent Electoral Commission, ISIC, today conducted the much-awaited local government elections across the 27 local government areas of Imo State. Our Imo State correspondent, Itok Wekutei, reports that the exercise was peaceful even though it witnessed low voter turnout and late arrival of election officials and materials. The streets are empty, roads barricaded, security operatives positioned in strategic locations as indigenous of Imo State across the 27 local government areas elect new leaders at the 30th of government. A beehive of activities at the premises of the State Independent Electoral Commission. Officials of the agency and its ad hoc staff arranging materials as they head to the polling units. The Commissioner of Police, Danjuma Aboki, is present here. He speaks on his deployment plan and warns anyone who plans to cause chaos or any breakdown of law and order. Enough deployment to all polling units, to all local government secretariat, that is the collation centers too. Enough deployment of police personnel, uh, armed forces and other security agencies. For the polling stations visited, voters say they arrived early at the polling units to cast their votes, but election officials are not in sight. From the information, they say the elections are supposed to start by 8. But you know, some Nigerian factors and some of the maybe it may be a logistic problem we are still waiting after hours of waiting the officials arrive to begin the exercise and electorates are given opportunity to cast their votes some electorates express excitement even though the exercise started late the icec officials also explains the reason for the delay even though they, were, they didn't come quite very early, but by the time they came, people were happy and voting commenced immediately. Yeah, so we are good. A representative of a civil society group who monitored the election is worried about the low turnout of voters. Imolites, we are basically on our way of this election. 
uh, even with all our efforts uh, to partner with ICEC to foster uh, sensitization, it didn't really uh, make a lot of move because the commission was almost on a, unsure that this election will hold up till yesterday. So, Meanwhile, the conduct of the election has continued to generate mixed reactions by political parties. While the PDP and Afga in the state have discredited the election, the APC in the state maintains the election is free, fair and credible, while commending ICEC for a job well done. I, as a, as a candidate, I can categorically tell you now that I am very disappointed with the way things, things turned out in this local government. As far as Abga is concerned, in Abombise, there was no election. We can tell you that, night, that there is no election holding in any part of Imo State. There is no. Okay, how can elections hold in Abombise and the materials are here? We have not seen any result sheets. As candidates of two powerful parties in the state, we have not seen any result sheets. I'm very pleased about today's uh, election. I've been going from one point to the other to know how the elections are going on. I'm very happy to say that the election is going on seamlessly and the people are happy. While Imo Indigens awaits the final result of the election, which is to be announced by ICEC, topmost in the minds of Imo Indigens is to experience a functional and active local government system after many years. A YouTube Akute Channel, Story Vision News. Well, it's different strokes as some other states are preparing for their local government elections. In Anambra State, members of the All Progressives Grand Alliance, ABGA, say they are prepared to clear the 326 wards and the 21 local government areas of the state ahead of a September 20th council election. Thousands tripped into Dr. Alex Equemi Square in Orca for the mega campaign rally of the party ahead of the election. And for the state governor, Professor Chukuma Saludo, the peaceful conduct of the local government election is a promise which will be kept. It's one week to the September 28th local government election in Anambra State, and the ruling All Progressives Grand Alliance, APGA, is leaving nothing to chance. As members of the party converge on Dr. Alex Ekweme Square in Orca, the state capital for a mega campaign rally for its chairmanship and councillorship candidates. Party faithful wearing APCA uniforms with placards bearing the name of their choice candidates sing and dance excitedly. And when the state governor, Professor Chukuma Saludo, alongside the deputy governor, Dr. Onyekai Bezim, and other party stakeholders arrive, they are warmly received. The state chairman of the party, Fiatu Ibiokoye, welcomes everyone and hands over party flags to the chairmanship candidates. The Libya people to march, march pass in front of the state box. This is happening. Next, some party leaders deliver the goodwill messages. How of you going to be local government chairman? I am imploring you to take a leave out of the characteristics of our governor, our governor who is always accessible. Addressing the gathering, the immediate past national chairman of APGA, Victor Oye, says the party has come of age, just as the incumbent national chairman believes next Saturday's election will signpost the direction of the 2025 governorship election. I take on for all APGA members to remain focused, remain focused, don't be distracted by the shenanigans of political control. No force on this earth can destroy Africa. The result of 28 September is going to be a reflection of the governorship election of 2025. And we are going to make a very loud statement. In his speech, Governor Saludo highlights the importance of the September 28th local government election to the people of Anambra State. Anambra, are we ready? Anambra, are we ready? Are we ready to do it again? Are we ready for again 21 over 21? Are we ready for 326 over 326? Anambra, 
is ready. We are full on ground. There is no opposition here. Ten years after the last local government election was conducted in Anambra State, Political Watcher says it's time the grassroots have a breath of fresh air with democratically elected leadership. It's time for his excellency to talk to Elsewhere, the River State Chapter of the All Progressives Congress APC says it will take part in the upcoming local government elections. Well, that's according to the State Chairman, Emeka Bikir, who made this known during an interaction with journalists in Port Harcourt Earlier today, Mr. Vicky revealed that his party's candidates have been screened by RCIC, that's the State Electoral Commission, and the list will be made available next week. He also insists that the Martin Amiwole and 26 other lawmakers uh, are members of APC in the state. As the duly elected chairman of all progressive Congress of River State, we want to put it straight first. The All Progressive Congress is going to partake in this local government election that is coming up on the 5th of October. Our candidates are already screened, cleared by INEC, the RISEC, and River State. We believe by next week they should be able to publish the names of the candidates who are going to partake in this election. APC is fully involved. And I want to let the world know that whatever we are doing is not legal. The Justice April Coup gave a judgment consigning the case in the court between the party and some people who claim to be caretaker members of this party in the state. And up till date, that judgment has not been vacated from the court. And anybody who claims that he's doing anything, I've asked the lawyers that is in charge of this case to make sure they get a court of a warrant of arrest for those of them who have come in, going around to prove themselves that they are so-called whatever in the party. And I want to put it in record that those 27 assembly members, they are still members of all progressive Congress. It's clear by the law. Anybody who thinks that he wants to run away from what there is no other has been able to vacate them, they are not members of all progressive Congress. We all know that they are members of our party. And we are all them to come to the party. Nobody's chasing anybody away from the political party. They are members of our party, and we are going to accept them fully to partake in whatever we're doing. Well, let's now bring you more on our lead story. It's a big day for the people of Edo State, and all eyes are on INEC for the coalition and eventual announcement of the winner of the governorship election. We're now joined on the news at 10 by our political editor, Shion Wakimbaloe, who is leading Channel's television's Edo governorship election coverage. Well, Shion, I remember you were speaking with the resident electoral commissioner earlier on, and you asked about when collision of results will begin. Has anything changed materially? And what more uh, do we know about well, the conduct of that election? Thank you so much, Coyote. Not so much has changed about, but look, a few things have happened in the last few hours, one of which includes the INEC announcement that two results out of the 4,519 polling units result that has now been contentious and it says it will investigate it. But earlier we spoke with the resident electoral commissioner of Edo State who told us that they will, as at the time we spoke with him about two hours ago, none of the results had come in from any of the 18 local government areas of the state. And he says as soon as the results coming in the 18 local government areas of the state, they will commence the announcement on the collation of the results. But what we do know is that media organizations are inside uh, the INEC headquarters in Benin City at Joe State, uh, hoping that the exercise of collation and announcement of result will soon begin. But there are a lot of stories uh, making the rounds, rumors, and, uh, um, well, social media uh, banters as to some results that a lot of people think that uh, cause for uh, a lot of explanation where they see that uh, numbers of accredit accredited voters are more than the number 
of votes uh, put together by all of the political parties in the election, which has raised a lot of eyebrows and people are debating. Annex says it will investigate it and that it will get to the bottom of the matter. But look, uh, the curfew is between 6 a.m. and 6 p.m. And a lot of people are now moving around freely in and around the city. But in all of these activities and the movement in and around the city is also electoral activity, movement of results from uh, the RA to the LGA and from the LGA now it will come to the state. So all, I, all eyes are on INEC headquarters in Benin City for the final coalition and announcement of results. Kaude. Well, the waiting game is now on. Nigerians are not new to this. But good thing is that Channels Television is not sleeping. Thank you very much, Ashil, our political editor, leading that team. Thank you for your reportage. And please get back to us as soon as you have more. Well, let's now tell you that the Zamfara State Chapter of the All Progressives Congress APC has called on the federal government to declare state of emergency in the state to allow the fight against banditry to succeed. In a statement signed by the spokesperson of the party, Yusuf Idris, the APC accuses Governor Dowd Lawal of sabotaging the efforts of the federal government in the fight against banditry in the state. The spokesperson, who says the current onslaught against banditry and terrorism in the state by the military under the supervision of the Minister of State for Defense is yielding result, asks Governor Dowd Lawal to support the fight. Still ahead on the news at 10, Nigeria and Libya hold talks for the construction of gas pipeline between both countries. But that's some business news. Please join us again. The National Emergency Management Agency, NEMA, has raised the alarm over the severe consequences of this year's flooding in Nigeria, which it says has affected over 1.6 million people. Speaking at the 2024 downscaling of flood early warning systems and recovery strategy meeting in Berning Kebi, the Director General of NEMA, Mrs. Zubaydu, Zubeda Omar says at least 175,000 farmlands have also been submerged so far. The Director General calls for an urgent need for collective action to curb further disaster. This high-level meeting of traditional and religious leaders, local government officials and state flood management agencies is organized to brainstorm on how to mitigate the effects of flooding in parts of the country. From the national emergency the Director General of the National Emergency Management Agency, NEMA, is represented by the Director of Disaster and Risk Reduction at this meeting. Although flooding has already wrecked havoc in some states in northern Nigeria, NEMA is also identifying other local government areas in the state as flashpoints for flooding in October and November this year. To safeguard our assets and cultural heritage against the impact of this year's flood, the National Emergency Management Agency designed this downscaling exercise to integrate direct risk communication, which we are doing now. The Kebi State Deputy Governor also aligns efforts of the state government to mitigate the impact of flooding in the state. Kebi State Government is committed to collaborating with NEMA to ensure effective flood management and disaster risk reduction. Our state's emergency management agency and local authorities are provided to facilitate your assessment and provide necessary support. Beyond identifying those flood-prone areas, the agency is taking a step further to respond to the pending threat. NEMA has a plan. Very soon we'll roll it out so that all over the country there's going to be a program of grassroots emergency volunteer corps where people in various local government will be trained on ways to as first responders. Flooding has become a recurrent annual natural disaster in many states, and the consensus at the meeting is that all hands must be on deck to address the causes and impact of flooding on the citizens. The 79th session of the UN General Assembly, UNGA 79, is underway in New York, United States of America, with a theme, 
leaving no one behind, acting together for the advancement of peace, sustainable development and human dignity for present and future generations. The summit underscores the urgent need for enhanced international cooperation to address present challenges such as climate change, poverty and inequality, while also tackling the impact of ongoing conflict and global health crisis. O Channel's television is in New York and our correspondents Larry Lassisi and Juliana Lyanka will be bringing you reports and updates on the event. And speaking of updates from the event, social media platforms, government and citizens must work together to promote accountability and trust for a healthy information ecosystem in the world. This was a consensus at the high-level meeting organized by the International Panel on the Information Environment as part of the United Nations Summit of Future Action Days. Our correspondent, Larry Lassisi, who is covering events at the United Nations headquarters in New York, has a report. Policymakers, scientists, members of civil society, top media executives and other experts are at this high-level meeting as part of the United Nations Summit on the Future Action Days. Organized by the International Panel on the Information Environment, IPIE, and its partners, those gathered in the theme, Truth, Trust, and Hope in the Global Information Environment, putting principles into practice. They consider the global trends in artificial intelligence and social media and how to ensure human rights with information integrity. The lines between reality and misinformation are blurred. And this presents significant risks, but we also know that um, digital environment uh, embodies opportunities, so we have to understand them all. Uh, the internet, social media, online platforms offer tremendous educational and social benefits. Um, young people can access a world of information, they can connect to their peers, they gain um, various skills, cognitive, social, etc., that help them in the world. But at the same time, without robust safeguards, we know there's evidence, there's scientific um, evidence that they're exposed to risk. What you are doing and what we're trying to do is to find the tonics against the toxin. Uh, misinformation being and disinformation being almost a, as equal a danger um, as, as war um, and, and other um, climate. What we have found in our global principles is that uh, the, while the UN is, is working on uh, trying to make the world a better place everywhere, it is having a hard time making progress because of the toxic information environments in which we are operating. The chairman, CEO of Channels Television and a trustee of the International Panel on the Information Environment, John Momo, highlights the need for effective collaboration for an information space that will benefit society today. Media literacy is essential for everyone in today's information-rich environment, and we must safeguard information integrity by, you know, collaboration. It requires a collective effort. Journalists need to maintain the highest standards of transparency, fact-checking, and context, while society works together to promote accountability and trust. And by so doing, we can ensure that the information people rely on remains a reliable foundation uh, for informed decisions, both in the African continent and, and globally. Thank you. He also puts forward some case. suggestions. If you go to X or Twitter, as, as it was for, previously called, uh, the first thing you see is the trending uh, section. Uh, why can't we have fake news trending section as well? So that every day when you go there, you can discountenance, you know, the fake news. So this is the difference uh, that we will make. However, maintaining information integrity is not just the job of the media, as I said. Social media platforms must play their part in curbing the spread of disinformation. And the public must be equipped to critically access, assess the information they, they encounter. Considering the critical role the media and information plays in a vibrant democracy, the gathering agreed that steps must be taken to ensure digital accountability and improve information integrity. From New York, Lanre Lassisi, Channels Television News.
back home plans to build a 1,028 kilometer highway connecting Lagos to Abidjan, cutting across five West African countries, gains momentum today as a committee on the development project meets in Lagos. The Minister of Works, David Omai, says finishing touches are being put to all that is required to ensure the effective takeoff of the project track. Meanwhile, at the meeting being attended by representatives from ECOWAS countries, the Minister of Roads and Highway, Ghana, Francis Boakia, says his country is committed to the success of the project owing to the impact it will have on the region. We, we uh, the heads of uh, member uh, states of uh, ECOWAS, uh, you know, Côte d'Ivoire, Benin Republic, Togo, Ghana, Nigeria, uh, they met to agree to do a uh, road project about 1,068 kilometers, you know, uh, from Lagos to Abidjan. And uh, the design of the project, the ESIA design, conceptualization, uh, funding mechanisms have been on in the past 11 years. And so today we are going to be uh, listening to the committee of experts in terms of the design. And so we uh, believe that we finalize and approve the design today. And then we set uh, the goal for uh, procurement and probably in our next meeting. And of course, you heard me when I, uh, you know, gave um, commitments that we had closed our meeting of uh, ministers uh, for the little disagreement on the constitution of Alcoma. That's the board that we um, implement the decision of uh, the ministers and, of course, the president. I think. Uh, Ghana, even right from our independence, we were one of the founding fathers of this ECOWAS Commission, ECOWAS project, right from the days of Dr. Kwame Nkrumah and all other presidents who have come before. So our commitment towards the economic integration of West Africa is not in doubt. And we know that this project is a very important, very key milestone for the realization of the economic integration of Africa. So our commitment is total and we will continue to work very hard towards the realization of this project. And to education, over 60,000 out-of-school children in Bornu, Adamawa and Yobe State are said to have been enrolled in schools through the United States Agency for International Development USAID-funded Opportunity to Learn program. Officials of the United States Agency said this during a tour of some selected basic learning centers in Yola, the Adama State Capital. According to the U.S. Agency, over 4,000 of the first set of out-of-school children who started in 2021 have graduated after taking their basic education certificate examination. Over 10 million out-of-school children can be found in Borno, Adamawa and Yobe states, northeast Nigeria. That's according to the National Bureau of Statistics. Right? Yeah. But look, I was joking. Yeah. It just says this explains why the United States Agency for International Development, USAID, is trying to enroll some of these children into non-formal schools through the Opportunities to Learn program. You can do deep the program prepares and sharpens their numerical literacy and emotional skills for basic formal education. We should give it to the Adamawa state government. They've moved from four local government intervention to 21 local government now. And that's something we want to see in terms of sustainability. And I'm one of those very happy today to see these young ones have this opportunity to basic education. We know there is a free education in Adamawa state, as I'm saying, when issue and space, issues of space where to mainstream them is another problem because of the crowd in our government. So as far as our majority commission is coming up or taking up, then we are soliciting as a stakeholder to plead or to advocate for these young, vibrant Nigerians to have their own uh, Almagri schools nearby or where they will be Almagri schools so that they will continue their education. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah. 
Some government officials who accompanied the team also speak on efforts to address the out-of-school children challenge in the region. Having seen the beauty in the template that uh, the OTL has, uh, we decided to upscale it beyond the four local government that was being supported by USAID. Today, as I speak to you, the entire 21 local governments of Adamawa State is uh, implementing that the state government has taken over the ownership of the project. The importance of lawmaking, that's why the OTL find it very important and necessary to involve the honorable members in the team so that so for us to see what is happening, how we can make laws, how we can amend our laws. The team also distributed books and other learning materials to the various centers. Well, business news is next on the news at 10 with Will Ebong. Thank you, Kayode. The Nigerian and Libyan governments have commenced talks aimed at developing a regional gas pipeline to strengthen energy cooperation between the two countries. This was made known by the Minister of State for Petroleum Resources, Gas Minister Eric Beekbo, on his verified social media handle after he met with Libya's Minister of Oil, Khalifa Abdul Sadiq, and his team at an event in the United States. Mr. Eppel explains that the cross-border pipeline which would begin from Nigeria is expected to transport gas to other African nations and the European markets upon its completion. He also mentioned that this strategic meeting aims to strengthen energy cooperation between the two countries. Now, Nigeria's foreign exchange reserves have climbed for the third consecutive week as the gross level decreased by 451 $1.73 million week on week to $37.39 million as at September the 19th. Analysts attribute the latest increase in the country's external buffers to the latest round of interventions by the central bank and the forex market as it doubled its efforts to support the Naira with the sale of additional $46 million to currency traders. Recently, the Minister of Finance and Coordinating Minister of the Economy, Mr. Wali Edun, said that Nigeria's foreign reserves recorded a net inflow of $2.35 billion in the first seven months of the year, which was largely driven by the stability of the Naira in the foreign exchange market. Forex trading at the FMDQ exchange closed the week negative as the total turnover of the Forex transactions carried out fell to $677.23 million as of September the 20th. This amount represents a 43.95% week-on-week drop against the more than $1.2 million value of transactions recorded last week. According to the FMDQ, the week-on-week -week accretion in total turnover was solely driven by the decline in turnover on the FX spot segment of the FX market. Elsewhere on the FMDQ platform, the Naira depreciated by 0.91% to 1,638 Naira, 83 cover against the dollar at the Nigerian Autonomous Foreign Exchange Fixing, NAFEX window, in contrast to 1,623 Naira, 99 cover recorded in the previous week. Now to the equities market, which ended the third trading week of September in the green as sell bargain hunting by investors for some high-value stocks drove the positive performance within the holiday-shortened week. The market's benchmark whole share index rose by 0.81%, while the total value of listed equities jumped by more than 454 billion naira due to the gains by some key bellwether equities across three out of the five key counters of the market. However, the activity chart ended with negative performance as the total value of transactions, as the volume of transactions fell by 11.7%, value was down by about 11.9% as well, while the number of deals carried out this week was lower in contrast to last week's record. The shares of Cabotin Offshore supported topped a list of 41 gainers with 45.28% advance. Northern Nigeria flour mills led 39 other losers with 18.97% price decline, while the trio of Japol Gold, FBN Holdings, and UAC PLC were the top three most actively traded stocks for the week. And for the NASD OTC securities market, as the unlisted market, it ended the week strongly in the green as the index soared by 3.78% week to date, while the market's overall value rose above 3 trillion naira. At the same time, the volume, volume of securities traded this week jumped by more than 96%. 
total value traded was higher by more than 72 percent while the number of deals carried out and stocks traded were also higher joe fluids and haradell holdings were the most traded security in volume and value terms on the nesd exchange for the week Now let's bring you some key expectations for Nigeria's financial market next week. And we start off with the Central Bank's Monetary Policy Committee, which will begin its two-day raised decision meeting on Monday. And that will be its fifth meeting this year amid continued rise in the country's inflation. Next on the list is the FGN bond auction set to be carried out by the Debt Management Office on Monday next week, where it will issue three FGN bonds worth 150 billion naira. And that's a wrap on business news. It's back to Kayade for the rest of the news at 10. Oh, thank you, Will. Victoria Longjun is next with sports news from our Buja studio. Thank you, Kyra. It's time for the exciting world of sports, and it was not a good outing for Anthony Joshua as Daniel Dubois sensationally dismantled him in five rounds to catapult himself into a global star sporting stardom in front of 96,000 fans at Wembley Stadium on Saturday. The 27-year-old dropped Joshua multiple times to retain the IBF heavyweight title and leave his British rival's career in ruins. After a storming start, Dubois eventually stopped Joshua with an incredible counter to, to secure the biggest win of his 24-fight career. In the English Premier League, Chelsea defeated West Ham 3-0 with a brace from Nicholas Jackson and a goal from Cole Palmer. Elsewhere, Aston Villa defeated Wolves 3-1, while Fulham beat Newcastle with the same scoreline. Leicester City and Everton settled for a 1-0 draw, while Liverpool hammered Bournemouth 3-0. Southampton played a 1-0 draw with Ipswich Town, Tottenham East past Brentford 3-1. In the last game of the day, Manchester United were held to a goalless draw by Crystal Palace. And the Norris took pole position from championship leader Max Verstappen and Lewis Hamilton in a dramatic qualifying for the Singapore Grand Prix. Norris, who trails Verstappen by 59 points in the championship, bit his rival by 0 0.203 seconds as quarter three all came down to one lap due to a crash from Ferrari's Carlos Sainz at the final corner. The McLaren driver was on course to be on pole before the red flag caused by Sainz and delivered a superb lap at the end as Verstappen joined him on the front row ahead of Hamilton. And reigning MotoGP champion Francesco Bagnaia won the sprint at the Emilia Romana Grand, Grand Prix after the pole sitter capitalized on a mistake by championship rival Jorge Martin. As Martin looked to reel in Bagnaia, the Pramac racing rider also had to look over his shoulder with Bastian, Bastianini ensuring he was sandwiched between the two red factory Ducatis after the Italian left Marquez far behind. But Bagnaia maintained his composure and took the checkered flag less than three tenths of a second clear of Martin, with Bastanini finishing third on all Ducati podium while Marquez finished a distant fourth. That's it on Sports News. It's back to you, Coyote. Well, thanks, Victoria. Outside the country now, Lebanon's health ministry says the number of people killed in an Israeli airstrike in Beirut on Friday has risen to 37, three of them children, with 68 others wounded. 
Rescuers searched through the rubble after a high-rise building collapsed and others were partially destroyed in the attack. Excavators were brought in to help clear the debris as medical staff surveyed the scene and people waited for news of those who were still missing. The attack hit the densely populated neighborhood of Dahir, a Hezbollah stronghold in southern Beirut. And an Israeli airstrike on a school in Gaza City has killed at least 22 Palestinians, mostly women and children. And that's according to Gaza's Hamas-run health ministry. The school closed during the war, was housing displaced people, the health ministry said. Uh, the Israel Defense Forces said it targeted a Hamas command center, which the militant group was using to plan and carry out terrorist attacks. Hamas has denied using schools and other civilian sites for military purposes. And the main news again. The people of Edo State have voted to elect a new governor to succeed the incumbent, Godwin Obasaki, whose constitutional eight-year double term ends on November the 21st, 2024. And while the wait continues for INEC to open its state coalition center, it has uploaded over 90% of polling unit result sheets of today's state governorship election in Edo on the commission's result viewing portal that's an IREV. And the Nigeria Civil Society Situation Room has said that the Edo governorship election accreditation process was conducted using the bimodal voter accreditation system BIVAS with the device functioning well in 98% of polling units visited. And that's the news at 10 for tonight, everyone. Thank you for watching. I'm Kayadoki Kilu, still with Channels Television, for all of the updates from the governorship election in Edo State.